Welcome to the Gear Vlogs Automotive Podcast, episode 29. In today's podcast, I talk about Kia Premier's the EV9 seven-seat SUV, the Tesla Model 3 hacked, when America's sports car becomes a record-breaking British supercar, the Cadillac CT4V and CT5V Blackwing arrival in Forza Horizon 5, Tesla prepares to make 4 million units and Mitsubishi Moonstone concept. If this is your first time here, thanks for clicking that play button. I'm Mario Gear, and I've been involved in the automotive industry for well over 15 years. I'm sharing my enthusiasm for all automotive topics with you. Let's begin. Our first story Kia Premier's EV9 seven seat SUV, 336 mile range, V2G capabilities, and a GT version. Let's get into it. As promised, following our first glimpse of an official images of last week, Kia has a fully launched its long anticipated EV9 SUV ahead of pre orders next quarter. In addition to further details regarding some of the technology we've already seen in the Kia's f first third row EV, the automaker shared exciting news regarding sustainability on autonomy over-the-air updates, and vehicle-to-grid capabilities. A quick recap on Kia's first three-row electric SUV. The Kia EV9 debuted as the second all-electric model donning the Korean automaker's new EV series name nomenclature. Like the EV6 crossover that preceded it, the EV9 sits atop Hyundai's Motors Group's 800V eGMP platform offering ultra-fast charging speeds in addition to capabilities for vehicle-to-load VTL power and potential for greater uses. More on that below. We've been anticipating today's official debut since Kia's first tease of the SUV concept in November of 2021. That was soon followed up by a working prototype last summer that closely resembled its original dream design form. In mid-March, Kia shared the first full images of the EV9 inside and out, relying some of the design's elements reiterated during recent presentations. This includes the SUV's unique digital spin on Kia's square tiger face front end as well as multiple seating options in the cabin including second row swivel seats that turn 180 degrees hmm. while that was certainly enough to briefly per perk our interests we were quickly anticipating full ev9 debut from korea which was promised before the end of the month Following the full presentation from Kia, you can view that for yourself below. We have learned a ton more about this all-electric SUV, and there's a lot for future, future customers to get excited about. The Kia EV9 SUV specs and features. Let's dig right into there and unfold. The Kia EV9 will come available in two different battery size options a 76.1 kilowatt hour pack in standard rear wheel drive option or a long range 99.8 kilowatt hour battery available in both rear wheel drive and all wheel drive configurations when asked the kia team confirmed that both the standard and long range variants of the rear wheel drive ev9 will be sold in north america the automaker is not sharing detailed performance specs for each trim level just yet, but it did share a few. Rear wheel drive long range. One single 150 kilowatt hour or 350 nanometer electric motor, estimated 0 to 100 kilomom or 0 to 60 mile acceleration in 9.4 seconds. Rear wheel drive standard range on a single 
160 kilowatt in electric motor estimated 0 to 62 acceleration in 8.2 seconds the all-wheel drive variant two electric motors that combine for a total of 282 um, estimated 0 to 60 in under 6 seconds right now Kia is estimating its long-range rear-wheel drive ver version of the EV9 will be able to deliver 541 kilometers or 360 336 miles of range on a single charge since the estimates were calculated using a more generous WLTP standard we expect the official EPA estimate range to land between 300 and 310 miles per hour or miles Blech. tongue twister there he also said it will eventually introduce a boost option that will increase the torque of the all-wheel drive SUV's front motor to a total of 700 nanometers. That adds add-on will be available for purchase at a later date using a new tool debuting on the EV9, the Kia Connect Store. Adding to the Kia, the Connect Store will enable future drivers to purchase digital features and other services at their leisure, all installed over the air without any need for a dealership visit. When asked by the media during the debut presentation, Kia shared that the Connect Store will offer features as either a one-time purchase or subscription option. Now that's interesting since considering most all the makers are all going for subscription-based options, so hopefully... Uh, one-time purchases may uh, take the lead and become the norm, which we hope. One of the huge selling points of the EV built upon Hyundai Motor Group's 800V EGMP platform is the charging performance it can deliver. The super fast charge rates of the Hyundai Ionic 5 and Kia EV6 have already gone over really well with consumers and should be no different when the EV9 SUV arrives. Kia states that the 800V platform will be able to garner an estimated 239 kilometers or approximately 149 miles of range in just 15 minutes of DC fast charging, which could be perfect for future road trips in the family size electric SUV. Another huge perk enabling enabled by the EGMP platform is the integrated charging control unit allowing for the discharge of energy from the EV's battery to power other devices. This is better known as vehicle to load or VTL. Kia states that the EV9 will be able to deliver 3.68 kilowatts of power to other devices, whether it's a laptop, a mini fridge, or charging another EV. Now that's interesting. We've explored the function ourselves with the Hyundai Ionic 5 and Ionic 6, but Kia is taking things a step further in the EV9 with another first. Kia's all electric SUV will come equipped with technology to support vehicle to home following allowing future owners to use the ev9 as a backup power source during emergencies or power outages and so they're taking a step from uh ford and i think gm's uh concept with their pickup trucks so way to go for the marquee has said the ev9 customers will eventually be able to add a vehicle to grid function in the future allowing them to actually supply surplus energy back to their local energy grid for profit there will be a lot of red tape to cut through to get this feature implemented but if successful it could be an absolute game changer yeah uh that one i find hard to go by how with energy companies how they are that they're trying to get away from that model of buying back energy from its end users but yeah comment down below what you guys think um i like the idea of being able to charge other vehicles like 
And, uh, but then again, I don't know if the EV9 is also going to be self-generating, if it's generating self-generating power to be able to charge under vehicles. Uh, I'd like to learn more about that. And uh, let's hear what they have to say. Let's move on to our next story. For our second story, Tesla Model 3 hacked by cybersecurity team in minutes. Research from a French cybersecurity firm won $350,000 and a new Tesla Model 3 at a security conference by hacking into the gateway and infotainment system subsystems of the vehicle in just minutes. Uh-oh. Researchers from a French cybersecurity firm won $350,000 in a new Tesla Model 3 at a security conference by hacking into the gateway and infotainment systems of the vehicle in less than two minutes. Wow. During the PWN to OWN 2023 hacking conference held in Vancouver, British Columbia last week, The so-called ethical hackers were able to fully compromise electric vehicle, gaining control of its safety systems and breaking into its infotainment system. They hacked into the Tesla's head unit instead of the entire vehicle for safety reasons. The head unit controls the car's infotainment and navigation systems. Of course, we would like to do this on the car itself, but... There's just too many variables that make that would make it potentially dangerous for those around the vehicle, including the buildings, vehicles, parking, park by, whatever that means. So we don't want to take a chance. We prefer a nice controlled environment, Dustin Child said in the video of the event available on YouTube. Child is head of a... Th- Threat Awareness at Zero Day Initiative, which runs bug bounty programs that pay researchers to find security breaches. Zero Day Initiative is owned by Trend Micro, a Japanese cybersecurity company that organizes the annual PWN to OWN conference. Hackers had 10 minutes to attempt three hacks on the Model 3. One team took over the car's interactive infotainment system. They punctuated the feat by replacing Tesla's logo with the hacker's logo. The hack earned the team 250000 In another hack, the team earned 100000 and a new Tesla Model 3 for fully tapping into the cars via an Ethernet network. So yeah, links to this article will be in the uh, show notes. So it goes back to what I was saying a long time ago. It's like this is a new, I think, business model opportunity for uh, uh, malwares, antivirus software companies now to... Uh, start getting software developers that work on uh, automotive um, products and starting coming up with uh, virus protections and uh, firewall safety concerns on top of what the OEMs are trying to implement or licensing it out to the OEMs. So yeah, comment down below what you guys think on that one. On to our third story. Jenkel Tempest. When America's sports car becomes a record-breaking British supercar. Created by a company which made a name for itself for building ultra-expensive customs, such as armored versions of a Bentley and Rolls-Royce flagships, the coach builder Tempest was surprisingly well-mannered at cruising speeds and brutally fast when flooring the gas. Unleashed on the public roads 40 years ago, the C4 was the first model iteration of the Corvette, while 
It maintained the long nose and short rear deck stylings of its predecessors. It introduced a host of innovations such as the so-called uniframe chassis and transverse monoleaf springs on the front suspension. At first, it was available with an underpowered small block, but things improved in the years that followed. The pinnacle of performance came in 1990 when the ZR1 was introduced, powered by a marvelous Lotus designed V8 dubbed the LT5. It initially made 375 horsepower, but in, by 1993, the output jumped to four, 405 thanks to several improvements. In addition to the factory-built ZR1, the fourth generation was transformed into a supercar killer by various tuners. Probably the most popular among examples was the Callaway 880 horsepower sledgehammer, a rocket on wheels that reached 254.75 miles per hour 35 years ago. But apart from established American tuners who tweaked it to perfection, the C4 also became a thoroughbred supercar in the UK thanks to Coach Builder, which was not known for developing these types of cars. The idea behind the Tempest. Robert Jenkel, the man behind this outrageous project, had a successful, successful career in the fashion industry during the 1950s and 60s, but he always had a soft spot for cars. In 1972, he decided to leave the fashion behind and focused his passion on funding a manufacturer called Panther West Winds. Although he designed and built some interesting retro-inspired vehicles, Jenkel's brand didn't do too well, and just five years later, it declared bankruptcy. The English designer didn't give up on his dream and founded a new company, Jenkel Group, which specialized in ultra-luxury customization of premium cars from the likes of Rolls-Royce, Bentley, or Mercedes, most tailored for celebrities and heads of state. Apart from lavish armored limousines or 4x4s, Jenkel ventured into the world of sports cars during the late 80s, creating a turbocharged Bentley-based Grand Tour called Gold Label. It was meant to be a daily driver for the ultra-rich, but even those customers were hesitant to pay over $800,000 or two point. 200 mil or 2 million by today's standards for the privilege of owning one to meet the man for the for a coach built luxury sports car Jenkel needed something more affordable so in 1990 he turned his attention to the convertible version of the America's favorite sports car the C4 Corvette to make the latest vet appealing to his wealthy clientele Jenkel took a part it took it apart to its barrack chassis and redesigned nearly everything. The new body panels were fabricated out of fiberglass and Kevlar. Then experienced craftsmen fitted them onto the chassis by hand. The front received a new hood with two NACA ducts that replaced the pop-up headlights while the nose was completely reworked, housing new headlights and fog lights that flanked two ample grills. On each side, the new car, Dub Temptus, received three seat sets of wide vents that aided brake ventilation. The first was located in the front bumper in front of the wheel arch, and the second stood behind the front wheel, whereas the third was integrated into the rear bumper behind each wheel. At the rear, the Corvette's four taillight arrays that carry over from the previous generation was also redesigned. More conventional one-piece taillight was fitted while a slim, slim spoiler was added on top of the trunk lid. Inside of the C4's dashboard, steering wheel, and seats were retained, but everything was reupholstered in high-end materials which varied according to every individual customer's choice. Some Tempests came with Al- Alcantara, while others were covered in exotic hides such as Fox Ostrich. It, 
A coach built body and a luxury interior weren't the only ingredients that Jenkel used to cook up the Tempest. His receipt also included a custom built V8 that transformed it into a record breaking supercar. Customers were able to order this car with the original LT1 unit. It could be had in either naturally aspirated 300 horsepower form or a supercharged for an output increase of about 70 horsepower. However, those that wanted a true bespoke Tempest could opt for a hand-built Tranco unit displacing 6.3 liters. This unit was based on a four-bolt competition bow-tie block equipped with forged internals and topped off with a Vortex supercharger. The power plant could spit out 537 horsepower and a mind-blowing 608 foot-pounds of torque. Figures that made it far more potential than the Lotus Design LT5 that powered the ZR1. Speaking of Lotus, the engine was mated to the ZF S6 40 six speed manual, the same unit that was used in the Lotus Carlton high performance sedan. According to the British coach builder, the Traco V8. Powered supercar could sprint to 60 miles per hour from a standstill in less than 3.3 seconds and reach a top speed of 200 miles per hour. Independents have shown that these figures were slightly exaggerated, but a Tempest was clocked at 3.89 seconds from 0 to 60 by Guinness representatives in 1991, earning it a spot in the book of records as the quickest production car available at the time. To cope with the added power of the Tempest's chassis received bigger brakes, new dampeners, and could be electronically adjusted by the driver via a console-mounted dial. Three settings were available, touring, sport, and performance, first of which made the power full supercar surprisingly comfortable. Moreover, the steering was light and precise, convincing journalists who got to test, test it that it was the most predictable and easiest to drive supercar of the early 90s. If the roads were dry and the throttle was treated with respect, most of them concluded that it was the ultimate daily driver, praised everything about it had to offer. There's no official figures there, though no official figures exist, several sources cite that around 35 units were built from 91 to 93, priced around 270000 or 596000 today. Each of the cars were sold to customers in the Middle East. The sole exception was kept by Robert Jenkel himself, who eventually sold it to a private buyer from the UK who still owns it today. While it was never as outrageous as the Callaway Sledgehammer, there came to straight-line performance. The Jenkel Tempest was a legitimate C4-based supercar that excels in more ways than one. Even if three decades have passed since the last one, the Jenkel Complex in Surrey, England, and a few remember it ever existed, it remains one of the most fascinating vehicles coach built in the UK during the 90s. Gee, wonder how many of these will uh, ever show up on uh, Bring a Trailer or uh, Hemmings. Be interesting to find uh, any uh, survivors of this car. Comment down below if uh, if this might be a vehicle for a Doug DeMuro to uh, do a review on if he ever, ever gets an opportunity to find one. Let's move on to the next story. On to our fourth story. The Cadillac CT4V and CT5V Blackwing arrival in Forza Horizon 5 just increased gameplay intensity. Cadillac's big announcement has made the Forza Horizon 5 more exciting with the arrival of their V8-powered luxury sedans. The Series 19 update brings many exciting changes to Forza Horizon 5. But the most thrilling addition has got to be the debut of the Cadillac CT4V and 
CT5V Blackwing sedans. Cadillac is celebrating 20 years of V-Series performance, so it has come up with the idea of making that by bringing in these two hot sedans to the popular racing game. The car maker feels that this move will give gearheads across the globe a chance to experience these stunning vehicles through this platform, and we ain't complaining. <laughs> the CT4V Blackwing and CT5 Blackwing come to Forza Horizon 5 as part of the Midnight to Horizon series, a component of the Series 19 update. These will be offered to the players as seasonal rewards upon completing in various challenges. The CT4V Blackwing will be available as a reward from April 6th to the 12th and the CT5V Blackwing from April 20th to the 26th. The CT4V and CT5 Blackwing sedans added to the Forza. The Blackwing Duo will not be the first Cadillac in Forza Horizon 5. They are joined by the 2013 XTS and the 2016 CTSV, which have been a part of the game for a while. But they bring a new level of thrill that's exclusive to the type of performance sedans, making them a must have addition to your Forza Garage. Both of these sports sedans are hot tickets with huge demand, so owning one of these virtual platforms is going to be exciting for a lot of gearheads. The CT4 Blackwing is worthy successor to the ATSV. It's got plenty of grunt thanks to the mighty 3.6 liter twin turbo V6 engine and offers a stellar handling package with its rear wheel drive only configuration. With 472 horsepower and 445 foot pounds of torque, the CT4 Black Queen is perfect for racing or cruising around the expensive open world of Forza Horizon 5. It is available with a 5 speed manual transmission or a 10 speed automatic and can shift from 0 to 60 in just under 4 seconds. So, yeah. Uh, there we go. I'm not much sure myself, uh, pretty much are uh, not a gamer, but for those of you that are, what do you guys think? Are these game simulators getting so good that it's getting to the point where for most of us who can't afford to get these cars in real life is the virtual world of the virtual gaming driving sims the next best thing? What do you guys think? Okay, let's move on to the next story. Our fifth story, Tesla prepares to make 4 million units of its cheap electric car, supply chain sources say. Tesla is preparing to make 4 million units of its next vehicle, a $25,000 electric car based on supply chain sources coming out of China, with a plan to build 20 million vehicles per year by the end of the decade. Tesla is going to need to expand its vehicle lineup quickly. Not only needs new vehicles in the lineup, it needs cheaper vehicles. Um, let's see. For a few years now, Tesla has been testing a cheaper $25,000 $25, electric car. It is expected to be unveiled soon, but details have been hard to get. Now a new report from China-based 36KR claims that some information on the new Tesla vehicles based on supply chain sources translated from Chinese. Here goes. Sources revealed the 36 Krypton that Tesla's upcoming low-priced model is the small Model Y and Tesla's building an annual production capacity plan of up to 4 million vehicles for it listed regarding news lead technology consulted tesla insiders but the insiders did not answer directly under a repeated questioning they just gave a no comment <laughs> 
According to the report, Tesla plans to distribute that 4 million vehicle production capacity among several factories across the world, including over 1 million vehicles out of its upcoming Gigafactory Mexico. Recently, a prototype of a strange-looking compact Tesla vehicle has been spotted in China, and it has been speculated that it could be the new, cheaper, high-volume car. So, yeah, um, what do you guys think? Looks a little more like a compact, you know, anything like a compact Tesla's version of a compact Civic to me, but what do you guys think? Um, Comment down below. We want our next story. And for our last story, Mitsubishi Moonstone Concept. IED students design a futuristic electric coupe SUV for 2035. The sporty crossover is the result of IED's master course in transportation design with the support of Mitsubishi. Looking at it, it kind of reminds me of uh, in Isuzu V-Cross, if you remember those. Like a modern take on that. Um, but anyway, let's get into the story. Mitsubishi re- recently announced an array of production models for the next few years, which means that the designers will be quite busy. The latest Mitsubishi concept, however, doesn't come from the company's own design studio, but from students of the Isato Europe, Europe Design, or IDE, who envision a fully electric SUV called Moonstone. The goal of the project was to create an SUV for 2035 with attention to its environmental consciousness credentials, including the use of sustainable materials. The resulting concept car was unveiled today, March 28th, at a special event held by IED in Turin, Italy. The Mitsubishi Moonstone boasts a two-door coupe SUV body style with a rather compact footprint, generous ground clearance, and aerodynamic silhouette, and plenty of Mitsubishi styling traits. The front end is ca- categorized by the uh, LED headlights, remnants of the Mitsubishi XFC concept, the bonnet mounted LiDAR in fully closed grille, and the pronounced chin on the bumper, which is not the best for the concept's off road angles. The profile of the concept is heavily sculpted and features a healthy dose of plastic cladding on the boxy wheel arches with the rear fenders being the busiest part of the design. The steep front windscreen merges with the side windows thanks to the black roof and pillars while the heavily inclined roof line and rear glass one look out of place in a sports car. The tail has a Y-shaped LED and integrated ducktail spoiler, another roof-mounted wing, and an aluminum-style skid plate. Interesting. Overall, the Moonstone could be a reincarnation of Mitsubishi Eclipse sports car, which would be more in line with the character of the original compared to the current Eclipse crossover compact SUV. IED didn't provide details on the fully electric powertrain, but promised astonishing performance and all-wheel drive capabilities. The concept was designed as an internal group of 18 students from the 2021-22 Master Course in Transportation Design in IED Torin. The team of the the team had the support of the Mitsubishi and had the help of technical sponsors Pirelli, OZ Racing, and Leckler, while the full-size model was built by Freeland Car, Mint AM, Cruzone, Modelli, and Raytech. As with all ID concepts, the Mitsubishi Moonstone is not destined for production and will remain a one-off design study. So yeah, interesting uh, design. I 
like I said, it kind of reminds me of a, uh, in the, what was it, the Zuzu, I think it was like B-Cross, I think was the model. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, comment down below what you guys think. Would you support something like this if this became available? So, so there we have it. Let me know what you guys think of uh, today's uh, stories. Um, be sure to like, share, and comment on any of these stories. Share among your friends, and be sure to follow us on uh, all of our social media platforms. Till next time.